Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to continue my series on the Debian displays and as you can see on the display I have already prepared today's topic. Uh, I will show you how to create analog dial indicators on your Debian display and I will show you both ways how you can display a value which is received by the display and how you can use uh, dial indicators as some kind of knobs so you can touch the indicator and move around uh, your finger uh, and just poke on it and then set some value which will be sent on the serial port. And uh, these indicators have quite tricky uh, programming. It's easy to understand once you understand it, but uh, the beginning is a bit difficult. At least it was difficult for me. So first, uh, let me jump to the Photoshop window which I have open on my other screen and show you how I drew this uh, display that you see on, on the screen. So right now you are looking at uh, my Photoshop and you can see the same background image that I have in the DGAS uh, editor. And you see the two uh, indicators here and the two boxes received and sent. And then I can uh, explain you how this thing works. So these displays have their own uh, coordinate systems and you have to follow those rules in order to uh, set up uh, the commands and parameters uh, properly for the display. So yeah, as you know, for the display itself, uh, you have the X and Y axis and the X axis is obviously the horizontal axis and that starts at the uh, top left corner, so uh, right here. And then the y-axis also starts there and uh, gets more and more positive downwards. So it is an upside down uh, coordinate system. So that will be regarding the x and y coordinates. And that is important to know uh, how, how it is placed. Uh, because, for example, you want to place the needle uh, somewhere at the center of the circle. Or you want to put the sensitive area uh, perfectly around the circle. So then you have to know... Uh, at which coordinates you should uh, put these uh, items. And then another, a bit more tricky and um, even more important uh, feature is uh, the, let's say, almost like polar coordinate system uh, for the dials. So it is uh, described by the angles uh, as you go around the clock here. And it works basically the same as, a, as the dial of a, of a watch. And uh, the first thing that we should uh, know here is that at uh, the top position, so at 12 o'clock, we have the 360 degrees or zero degrees. So the ending point and the starting point uh, for the uh, angular coordinate system. And then it goes clockwise. So it goes towards the larger numbers, uh, as you can see it on my indicator. And uh, what is very important is that uh, you have the same angles basically so 90 degrees is 90 degrees but even this place uh, have their angles defined as half angles so actually if you step one degree of angle in the real coordinate system so let's say in the real life uh, angle so if you want your uh, dial needle to be moved uh, one degrees away clockwise you actually have to send the command to move two degrees. So the step size of the Devin display is uh, 0 0.5 degrees. So when you do a full circle here, that will be 720 degrees. So for example, if you want to move your needle uh, to 4,165, then you have to make the needle to move to the 90 degrees position. If you want it to move uh, to the 5,000 uh, 5, uh, value, then uh, this is 45 degrees. So in real life, that is 90 plus 45, so 135 degrees, and times 2, so 270 degrees. So you have to send the needle to the 270 degrees position. And then if you want to go to the zero, uh, that is uh, actually uh, 90 degrees away from here. So 135 here uh, plus 90 is 225 times 2, 
So that is 450. So you have to remember this because uh, later on we will return to this. So whatever we have at zero, that is the 450 degrees in terms of deviant display angles. And the 5000 position is uh, 2 times 135 degrees, so 270 degrees in deviant display uh, terms. So that's what we have to know here. And uh, another thing that I suggest you is to put a small circle wherever you want to place uh, your needle, which is obviously the center of this uh, thing, uh, because later on it will be just uh, easier to uh, yeah, find this position. But obviously, if you use an image editor like this, then you can always perfectly know the position of the center of this circle. So yeah, you can just uh, keep track of it like that. So this was regarding the dial indicator and uh, the same rule applies uh, for the other type of dial indicator which uh, is used as a knob or potentiometer or uh, whatever circular control you can name encoder. Uh, so the angles are defined as the same but you do the things uh, backwards. So the display will do it uh, for you uh, in the background, but still you have to define the starting position. So this is the 450 degrees in terms of deviant angles, and that corresponds to zero degrees. And then you uh, keep going clockwise and you arrive at 5000, which is at, as, as, uh, as we talk about the absolute scale, at the 270 degrees in terms of deviant uh, display angles, and uh, the corresponding value is 5000. So then the display will know that if you move clockwise between these uh, two values, then you will end up at a certain angle because then it knows the difference between the zero and uh, 5,000 in terms of rotation. And then it can calculate back what is the integer number here. And since I mentioned integer numbers, here we can only use integers. So there are no uh, floating point numbers, but obviously uh, you can, for example, put uh, floating point numbers here. Let's say here you can put 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and so on. And let's say this could be a 0 0.6. And uh, then they would correspond to, let's say, 100, 200, uh, 300 and so on uh, numbers. And you do the math on your Arduino or on your serial terminal. So you receive 600, you know that you have to divide it by 1000 to get the floating point number, which corresponds to your indicator. So for example, if you want to create an indicator for a uh, pressure sensor or something, uh, where you want to uh, show the pressure uh, with a few decimals or a temperature sensor, then uh, you can show the uh, floating point numbers on the dial, but when you communicate with the display uh, or send numbers from the display, that will be always uh, integer. So you have to keep uh, this in mind. But now let's jump back to the editor and I quickly show you how to uh, add the controls to these uh, yeah, items. Uh, so here uh, in the editor, I show you the easy part first, which is the two text boxes. Uh, they, they are the same. So I put the text box here over the received area and another over the sent area. So you will just uh, simply create a, a text box. So that is under the text show and uh, data variable display. So there you go. You just create a, a square or rectangle and then you put it over your area. So I put it over here and then uh, I use the 1000 VP address and it will share the same VP address with this control because whatever number is received by the display uh, should be shown in this uh, rectangle and should be shown by the position of the needle. And then uh, some other parameters like font size and font color and alignment that is up to you. And uh, here we are just dealing with uh, integers. So I chose the variable type as integer. And you can see that the maximum number is 5000. So I, I'm totally fine with the four integer digits. And I leave the rest as it is, as you can see it on the display. 
And then uh, regarding the sent values, uh, everything is exactly the same except the VP address because now the sent value uh, has to end up at another VP address. Uh, it cannot be shared, but it will be shared uh, among the controls which I'm kind of trying to highlight here. So these controls at the bottom because uh, whatever we uh, touch here, uh, that will be sent to the 2000 uh, VP address. And since it is shared among the controls, then uh, for example, it will show up on the display. And then when it is sent to the serial port, uh, it will also show up as a value received from the VP address 2000. Now we can uh, move back to the top uh, item. And then we start uh, at the parameters. And as I said, it has the 1000 VP address. And now you can see that we have another icon file. If you remember, uh, then the icon file is basically the background picture. But here we have another icon file, 44.icl. And it is very important that you name it as this. So here you can see the 32 is the background picture and the 44 is this small needle. And how I created it is the same way as I created the icon for the background. And if you don't know how to do that, visit my website or check the description uh, of the video or the top right corner because I have my basic tutorial on how to configure the display. And uh, that includes uh, creating the config file as well. But uh, how to uh, create the icon file for the a needle is just the same. So we go back to the welcome screen and then we have the Devin ICL generator. So I just open this and then in this generator uh, you have to click uh, select pictures and then uh, you have to get your uh, needle file. And for this let me jump back to Photoshop just uh, for a moment to show you kind of a trick. So we are here at Photoshop and as you can see uh, we have the display but there is no uh, needles. So what I would recommend is that you just simply draw a rectangle or whatever your uh, needle should be. It can be a triangle as well. So I just uh, draw this thing. Maybe it's easier if I magnify it. And then I just uh, bring it somewhere. So now uh, I can, let's say, eyeball the size of it, obviously. This is up to you, it's, it's not my uh, part to show you how to uh, draw a needle. I'm just showing you how to do it roughly. So then you have your needle and uh, that will show up on the right side here in the uh, layers. So you, you just right click this layer and then you can export as a JPEG. And you export it into a JPEG file, so you will have just uh, your needle. And obviously you can uh, do this uh, however you want. Uh, you can draw a more sophisticated uh, needle and so on, but uh, this is an easy way uh, to do it. So you just create it uh, on a new layer and then you just export that simple layer because then all the dimensions are matched uh, with your uh, dial uh, indicators dimensions. So now let's say that uh, you saved uh, this uh, piece of uh, needle and you have the JPEG file. So we jump back to the previous window and now I have my dial indicator here. So I just uh, open this and then it shows up on the list and you can see that I uh, have again a zero number in the beginning of this. So that's there and then I just uh, generate an ICL file. And then obviously when you save the ICL file, it has to be in the divin underscore set folder. And then uh, save it with this name, 44. And then you save it and you are done. And then once you saved the file, you will be able to retrieve it from this list. So you just press there and uh, that's all. You have the 44 ICL selected. And uh, typically it doesn't show up immediately there. But after you saved the project and generated it, uh, after a while it just pops up there. So then it will be there as you can see it here. And now you added uh, the icon file. So press on this uh, plus uh, symbol here. And then you will see your file uh, here. 
If you need to filter away the background, you can uh, check this checkbox, but otherwise just uh, select this item and press OK. So then uh, this thing comes up. And uh, the funny thing is that uh, you're supposed to know the dimensions, so the width and the height of your picture in, in pixel units. So then you know where should be the center uh, located, at what pixels, uh, at the base of the triangle. And then, uh, then actually you don't need this. So you just uh, click on an arbitrary position. And now this uh, set of values showed up and you press OK. But I don't press OK here, so I just exit this and uh, just press uh, Cancel here. And if you know the dimensions of your picture, you can just uh, write in the numbers uh, here. Because otherwise, I show you just for the sake of demonstration, but here you see the resolution, 8 times 82, uh, width and height. If I press OK and I click somewhere and I press OK, then you see that the icon rotation center changes, uh, but obviously we need to change this back. Uh, so you can manually uh, write it here uh, according to your uh, dimensions. And then here these four parameters are very important and this is what I explained when I showed you the image in Photoshop. So the start variable is right here, zero, and this is the real life value. So whatever number is received by the display, uh, that is this uh, zero number. And then the end variable, uh, is the 5000. So that is where the dial ends or where the needle reaches the max. And then the start angle is where you have the zero here. And if you remember, uh, the zero angle is here. The step size is 0 0.5. So one degree step in the real life is two degrees a step uh, in, in the even terms. So if you move to this position, which is like 90 plus 90 plus 45, uh, 225, uh, then actually this will be 450, as I wrote it there. And then the end angle is here, which is like 90 plus 45 degrees, and that is 135 times 2, so that is 270. And yeah, that's all. And then uh, you have these parameters uh, at the bottom. So this is just about uh, if you want to have transparency with your needle or not and how strong uh, should be the filter and, and so on. So you can play around with these values just to see uh, how your uh, display looks like. And uh, keep in mind that uh, sometimes whatever is shown here or whatever is shown here under the preview uh, might not represent uh, the same result as you would see on your display. So when you upload uh, the uh, program uh, on your DVIN display, you might have uh, the correct values and the correct uh, appearance. But here, as you can see, sometimes things go funny. So then uh, this is done. And then now we can move to the, uh, to the other part. And as you can see, here at the bottom, we have an icon rotation again. I tried to select that first. So now I selected it. So this in the background, this icon uh, rotation uh, option, which is the same as this here, which rotates the needle, is exactly the same. Uh, the only difference is that you had to place uh, the rectangle here instead of here. Uh, the only rule is that the top left uh, corner of your rectangle should be at the center of the circle of your dial indicator and then uh, the top right should be uh, intersecting the, the arc of the circle and then the bottom uh, left should also intersect with this. So basically the side length of your uh, square, because it will be a square, is the radius of your uh, circle in, in, um, in terms of pixels. So here I did the same at the bottom and then uh, same icon uh, file, same everything because it's the same uh, dial gauge, but uh, the VP address is different. So that will be 2000, which is the VP address for the outgoing data. But then there is another thing which we have here, which is this rotation adjustment. And that uh, also comes uh, from here, touch control, rotation adjustment. So I uh, created a square uh, whose uh, side lengths 
is equal to the diameter of the circle. So square again and the diameter side length or edge uh, length. And then here we have to do a bit more uh, fancy stuff, but it's uh, still not too sophisticated. So the data format is integer. We cannot really change too many things. Uh, this high byte and low byte is uh, not relevant for this work. We just use integer. And then the center coordinate is, is just the center coordinate. So you can see it's uh, 326 and 650 ish. Uh, so that's the coordinate uh, here. And instead of typing these values, you can actually click on the set button and just uh, go here and click. And then uh, you see 327, 653. Uh, these numbers will show up uh, here uh, in these boxes very soon if I click OK. So it changed. And if I go back, uh, that's why I suggested to draw a small circle or put a point somewhere uh, or not somewhere exactly at the center of the circle because then if you want to do this with clicking instead of uh, remembering your coordinates then you can do it quickly here by just yeah looking at uh, these things so now it will be here and now uh, we have a set of parameters i just uh, start uh, a little bit in the middle just to do it uh, from the easier uh, parameter. So start angle is exactly the same as in the previous uh, example. So that is uh, here at 450. So remember 90 plus 90 plus uh, 45, 225 times 2. So this and the corresponding value return value is 0. And then we move to the end uh, angle 90 plus 45, 135 times 2. So that is 270 and then uh, the corresponding value is 5000. So then if you touch anywhere in between these areas, uh, these two, uh, zero and 5000, uh, then the display will know that you touched, for example, 3333. And then we have this uh, inner diameter and outer diameter. Uh, and how this can be imagined is the following. So when you touch an area on a rotation adjustment uh, control, you basically use this circle as a ring. So you can imagine a ring here instead of uh, a full circle. Obviously, if you uh, write these parameters in a way, you can make it into a full circle. But now we imagine this as a ring. So the R0 inner diameter is the distance between the center of the, your circle and then a certain radius, which you want to define as the uh, starting point of your sensitive area. So for me, that is 65 pixels. So if I touch something in the center of the display, nothing will happen. But if I'm touching uh, in a ring, which is between uh, 65 and 125 uh, pixels away from the center, so a ring, uh, then uh, the display will react. So that's how you should uh, imagine this. So you can see that uh, the length of this thing is roughly uh, 250 uh, pixels, 253. So that, that could be actually modified a bit. So now it's a perfect uh, square. So then the 125 uh, means that really that I'm going from the center uh, 125 pixels out. So that will be the outer uh, shell of my ring and then 65 is somewhere halfway basically so then that's that's there and uh, so in between 125 and 65 pixels away from the uh, center of the display I have the sensitive ring area so then uh, this part is done and before showing you how the display works uh, I jump to the Arduino code because that's very simple and I show you how the data is being treated so we are here uh, in the Arduino IDE. So we have the software serial uh, library. We have to use this because the Nano or Uno uh, doesn't have an additional uh, serial port. So we are emulating one uh, by this uh, library. And here are the two pins that I'm using for it. And I have a third pin, which is the analog pin A0, uh, because I'm reading the output voltage of a potentiometer because that 
uh, that is what I use for emulating uh, some kind of input value for one of the dial indicators. And then uh, we create uh, an object here. And uh, then I also need an array uh, to store the bytes from the incoming data. So that will be the header, the command, the length of the message and the message itself together. And that is stored in the incoming data array. And then I store the analog reading again uh, as an integer. This is the row uh, bits between zero and uh, 1023. And then I have a timer which uh, lets the code run the AD conversion every X amount of uh, time. So then uh, in the setup, uh, first I set up the USB serial that is just for debugging. So that is uh, showing up on the computer's uh, serial terminal, uh, whatever is written on this serial. And then if I use the DWIN serial, uh, that is the software serial. And this is the communication between the Arduino and the display. And then I put this comment here. Uh, because I noticed that at uh, this board rate here, uh, probably due to the software serial library or due to the microcontroller, I cannot uh, properly communicate with the display. But with uh, this uh, 9600 uh, board rate, I can communicate with the display properly. So then in the loop, this runs over and over until you unplug the Arduino from the power. We have these two functions, so sometimes we look at the serial port and try to fetch text if something came, and also try to read the ADC and send the data to the display. So let's see how to read the ADC. So as I said, we have this ADC timer, and then if the time difference between the current time according to the millis, so that's the elapsed time in milliseconds uh, since you powered up the Arduino, uh, if this time difference is larger than 500 milliseconds, we read uh, the rest of the line here. And then what the code does is that uh, it stores uh, the analog reading result in this uh, variable and then it converts it into millivolts. Uh, so this number comes from the resolution of the uh, AD converter and this comes from the maximum voltage or reference voltage which is in our case now uh, 5000 millivolts or 5 volts. So then this calculation result is uh, converted into integer or cast into integer and then we send this to the display. And then here we just read the current time in millis and save it in this variable. So then uh, this will uh, yeah, the clock will tick until uh, this difference again becomes larger than 500. And then we enter the function again and perform whatever has to be performed in the function. And since there is a function here, uh, let me explain that first. So that is here at the bottom. So this is just uh, taking the integer that we want to send as an argument. And then uh, it incorporates into these uh, lines and just sends it to the DWIN uh, serial uh, connection. So we have the header and then we have the length and the length consists of three things. Uh, we have the VP address, which is two bytes. And then we have the write command, which is one byte. And we have uh, the data itself that we want to send. So high byte and low byte of our number, this guy here. And that's done. So this is how we send uh, the data uh, to the uh, Devin display. But how we receive? So here I put a delay. It's a little bit illegal. Uh, I should do the same kind of thing uh, as I did here. But uh, this is just for the demo. So if there is something available on the serial uh, between the Arduino and the Devin uh, display, uh, then we go towards this part and while there is data available on on our serial connection between the display and the Arduino uh, we do whatever is uh, defined here and what is defined here is that uh, read one byte from the DWIN serial put it into this variable wait two uh, milliseconds and then take this variable that we just saved and put it in the item of the array and in the beginning i equals zero. So this will be the first item in the array. And we keep reading uh, until we run out of uh, data to be read from the uh, serial uh, connection. 
uh, yeah, so after we perform this line, we just increase the, uh, yeah, the variable here, the i, and then uh, we do the reading again, but then this will be i plus 1, since previously we increased the value here. So in the incoming data, square brackets uh, 1, uh, we put the most recent incoming byte value, and that's done. And now um, we move towards this part, and what happens here is that we know that if something comes from the display, uh, there will be a number, which is this uh, hexadecimal number, inside the message at a given position, which is the fourth uh, byte, or here is the third uh, position in the incoming data array. It's zero indexed, so zero, one, two, three, which is four. Uh, four steps if we think about that in that way. So if the, if the fourth item is uh, 0x83, we know that something was sent from the display. So then uh, we do some magic here, which I explain you in a moment. And uh, the result of this magic is sent into the received uh, integer uh, variable. And uh, just to be sure that uh, I see what I should see, I check it on the USB serial, so on the terminal here. And then uh, that's, that's what I want to see, because basically we touch the, the display, we put the needle somewhere on the, on the indicator, that is the indicator at the bottom of the display. And then uh, we want it to send that value to somewhere on the serial port. And, uh, guess what? It ended up on our computer. So I will show you that this uh, ends up there. And then I just uh, basically erase the array uh, or its contents. So then when we do another reading later on, uh, we can then uh, start with a clean uh, data or a clean array. So then let me explain this uh, magic here. So, yeah, okay, first what happens here? Uh, we read from left to right, so we take the seventh uh, item or number seven item, which is the eighth item from the incoming data, uh, which is uh, the first byte of the two byte integer. And then uh, we put it in this uh, array and uh, shift it towards the left by eight bits. And then we use the uh, bitwise OR operation and uh, bitwise OR it together with the next item uh, from the incoming data, which is the other byte uh, of our integer. So here's the display and hopefully you can see all the details uh, properly. So at the top here, uh, I just have the potentiometer at the center basically uh, on my Arduino. So that's why it is showing this value, but you can see that uh, the number here uh, is jumping because the readings from the potentiometer is not perfect. And at the bottom, that's where we can touch the display. Uh, we are at zero, so basically nothing is visible there. But first, uh, let me play with the potentiometer and you should see some uh, drastic changes on this dial indicator. So now I put it to zero and I will max it out now. And uh, why you see it to be slow, because it is slow, but it is slow on purpose. If you remember, in the Arduino code, we added a half a second delay. So then that's why you see it uh, lagging a little bit. But you can see that, uh, yeah, this thing works. And then, uh, now I have to open my Arduino terminal because the other thing requires uh, us to see what is received by the Arduino uh, terminal or serial terminal. So you can see that we can communicate with the display because, or with the Arduino because we see the same uh, message as we have here written. So let me touch the display. So you see, uh, you see it on the display that we have 2620 and you see it here as well. And just to show you that it works, then yeah, we have the same numbers. And uh, 
this must be a little bit uh, faster than uh, the uh, ADC reading because this is done in a non-blocking way or actually it's blocked by every 100 milliseconds but still it's a bit faster so you can see that it works rather fast and uh, if you remember I also mentioned you that uh, when you look at the uh, display and you create the knob at, for the bottom uh, part then uh, actually you are not taking uh, the center of the circle into account so that is not sensitive so I touch it there and nothing changes there but if I move uh, my finger a bit outwards then uh, it should become after a while uh, more sensitive and you can see that now it's sensitive and we have the same values and if I hold my finger over the value then it will uh, send the values the same values continuously so you see it if I release then it will stop sending the values because we are not interacting with the display now yeah value is the same value is the same and then the other still works the top uh, dial indicator so that is nice so basically this is what I wanted to show you uh, don't forget to visit my website because I wrote a blog article about this so if you don't like to listen to videos or you find it more comfortable to read about uh, the instructions then the instructions are there also if you want to have this uh, Arduino code or you just want to support me in general for providing these kind of uh, contents uh, please consider becoming my supporter on Patreon uh, there you can find all other resources that I uh, publish and you can download them free so I hope that this video was useful to you I hope you learned something and see you in the next video